This is supposed to see what you've learned from what we've talked about. And if you, you know, and this is going to help you a little bit with your uh, elective engine performance panel too. If it's not, if it doesn't, it should. Have. Okay. This is just questions. Now, the washer around the base of some spark plug is there for the primary purpose of what? Why is that there? Let me ask you this phone call. Holy crap, that's a two answer. Yeah, D and F. What the hell? Oh no, it ain't D. I'm thinking C or guess C or D or B. I mean. <laughs> Okay, so what you got there? Technician A says positive temperature coefficient for misters increase their resistance as the temperature increases. Technician B says as the temperature decreases, negative coefficient for misters reduce their resistance. Who's correct about that? Mister, I've been through the electronics program. Which one do you mean? Not very difficult. Which sensor or circuit is not checked continuously on an OBT2 system? Not checked continuously. TP sensor, MAP sensor, ECT sensor, or O2 sensor heaters? Because you have continuous monitors and you have monitors that require certain criteria to be met before they can actually be run. Conventional oxygen sensors don't work until what? Which of the following would not be considered a computer input? Throttle put in a sensor, magnetic pulse generator, Part neutral switch or EGR vent cylinder. Hey, yes ma'am. I appreciate it. I'm sorry you had trouble yesterday, but anyway. That's okay. It happens sometimes. Um, when you have method, should I be concerned anymore or am I good? I, we actually ran it uh, long enough to work. It built pressure and everything, and it just like the book said, make sure it burped out. Okay. And it was still cool. It seems to be okay. okay. Just All watch right. your gauge. We got it set where the temperature gauge, or we did, it probably will be fault. But watch your temperature gauge. You know how you can pull it out of there? Okay. And just see how that, it'll be fine though. I mean, it seems to be like it was good. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm with you. That's class. okay. That's I appreciate fine. it. All right. All engines have some type of what system? PCB, EGR, AIR, or heated hydrocarbon vents. A lean air fuel mixture burns cold and fast, hot and fast, hot and slow, or cold and slow. vehicle can be heard for two seconds at key on, but the engine will not start. Wing. The fuel gauge shows the full tank. Fuel pump current draw is 8.9 amps. Which of the following is least likely to be the cause? zero, the engine is running rich, the engine may have a vacuum leak, the throttle plates may need to be cleaned, or both B and C are correct. The 
The engine is running at 243 degrees. The coolant system is full of clean coolant. The air conditioner is off, but the fan cycled on at the proper engine coolant temp, but they never cycled off. Both heater hoses are cool to the touch. Of the following, which is the most likely to be the problem? Technician A says the output of a Hall effect sensor can be checked with an AC voltmeter. Technician B says the output of a variable reluctance sensor can be tested with a lab scope. Who is correct? Let me give you this guy's number, and then she couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. EGR system failure can cause A, higher cylinder combustion temperature, B, pinging slash detonation, C, higher NOx emissions, or D, any of the above. A technician has been led by DTCs to investigate fuel trim numbers that are as follows. Short fuel trim, 1%. Long fuel trim, minus 25%. The fuel filter may be restricted, the crankcase wall may be contaminated with fuel, the fuel pressure may be low, or any of the above. A says a bad radiator cap can cause rust and corrosion build up in a car's cooling system. Technician B says the large pipe on the heater core is generally the heater core's inlet pipe. In other words, you've got a smaller one and then a larger one. Some heater cores will have a, both the pipes will be the same size, but one of them will have an orifice inside of it. Technician A says, injector firing frequency is directly tied to crankshaft sensor input. Technician B says, on an engine with a crankshaft sensor and a distributor, improper distributor rotor alignment can be corrected by adjusting the ignition timing.
technician is investigating a no spark condition on a vehicle with the following PID values. Look at your intake air temperature, your engine coolant temperature, your barometric pressure temperature, transmission oil temperature, throttle position, and battery volts. What's the most likely reason for the no spark? Faulty barrel, weak throttle position sensor, open IET sensor circuit, or none of the above. He needs to check more PIDs. These are questions like you'll see on the uh, L1 advanced engine performance test. You know, they do these little hand cool pit things. Mm -hmm. Five cylinder engine has a firing event ever how many degrees? 45, 144, 120, or 180? I see him scribbling them numbers over there. I ought to give you all a uh, math test on using the bore and stroke of a particular engine to determine what the cubic inch of each cylinder is and then to multiply that times the number of cylinders to tell me what the cubic inches of the engine is. You know how you do that, right? Bore squared times pi times stroke divided by four. That gives you the one for one solar. And then you multiply it seven times over. Temperature stamped on the copper case of a thermostat's wax pellet is the temperature at which the thermostat does what? Exhaust gas recirculation valve, when fully open, generally allows less, or a little, look at that, I may have said it up, a little less than 10% of the exhaust gas to pass back through the intake mix. Technician A says this is to reburn some of the exhaust gas. Technician B says this is done to cool the combustion chamber. Who is correct? Technician A says late ignition timing can cause the speed density fuel injection system to run rich and force the fuel trail readings to the negative. Technician B says an erroneously low barrel reading will drive fuel trim figures to the positive. Who is correct about that? If the vehicle speed signal is suddenly lost at road speed, what generally happens? Speedometer needle drops to zero, the speed control suddenly becomes dysfunctional, the transmission drops back to first gear, all of the above. <laughs> no we have a giggler over here. All right. If an engine with an automatic transmission is placed in drive with the brakes locked and the engine accelerated to wide open throttle, what information might be gleaned from watching the stall speed on a tachometer? The stall speed is the point at which it's when the engine stops gaining speed. It just stops at a certain speed. We got a whole bunch of choices here. Whether the engine is producing the power it should, the condition of the one-way clutch in the torque converter, the boiling point of the engine oil, Either A or B, either A or C, none of the above, all of the above. A vehicle is traveling down a straight highway with short and long fuel trims hovering near zero. Suddenly, a spark plug on bank two fails and begins this firing, what will happen to the O2 sensor signal on that bank when this takes place?
what happens to a student that has to do four automatic transmission swaps in one semester? It puts iron in his soul. He learns how to do transmission swaps yeah. very well. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets good at it. If you switch on the ignition and hear the fuel pump, what do you know? You know what? What is one thing you do know? Let's grade this. Swap paper for somebody. Here we go. Classic. Just say they can see how bad we did. Yeah. That clock up there says it's six o'clock. I know better than this. It's look. It's the AC Delco. There's no wonder it's not right. <laughs> Wash it around. Basically, some spark plug is for conducting heat out of the spark plug. Conducting heat out of the spark plug. That's what it's there for. That bevel surface on other spark plugs is there for the same reason. The spark, the cylinder has the hottest part of the engine during combustion, you know. All right, technician A says positive temperature coefficient for misters increase there. That's A only. So you expect something, you expect something like a piece of wire when it gets hot to get more resistance. Got it? That's positive temperature coefficient. Okay, the resistor, when it gets hot, if the resistance goes down, I mean the thermistor, it actually is going to be negative temperature coefficient. Right? Which sensor or circuit is not checked continuously? That would be the O2 sensor heaters. Why? Because certain conditions have to be met before it can test them. But anytime you're running around or crank the car or whatever, it's checking these all the time. It's always looking at them. Conventional oxygen sensors don't work until they reach 600 degrees. The wide band sensors, the ones, uh, they actually got to reach 1400 degrees before they'll start working. How many of you guys have been in your oxygen sensor modules on electrode? I don't know, but I think I failed. Yeah, that's cool stuff too because it tells you a lot. Of, it goes deep, deep in oxygen sensors. Oxygen sensor. Oh, yeah, I did that. Oh, engine performance. Yeah. It talks about the pump cell and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool stuff. It gets really in depth. Yeah. Which of the following would not be considered a computer input? The EGR vent solenoid. What is that? That's a computer output, right? It's an output, not an input. D, I guess. All engines have some kind of PCB system. Even diesels. They all got some kind of PCB system. Before the PCB valve, <laughs> And before the PCB system was developed, what they had was they had a draft tube that came outside of the engine block and it was cut at an angle so when you were driving down the road it created a little bit of low pressure to pull that crank egg blow by out of there. And that just smoked up the big city something awful. In 1962, Chevrolet put a PCB valve on their Corvair. And I had a 63 Corvair Spider that was a lot of fun to drive until the crankshaft broke. <laughs> that was actually the first car I drove legally. Um, my dad had a 55 Chevy pickup that he didn't use a whole lot. He had a 66 Chevy pickup that was a lot newer at the time. And so I would hotwire that 55 Chevy that he picked up and whoop down the road on it. Uh. And um, I was about 14 years old. And I turned about 15 I said, Daddy, you need to find me a, something to drive. He said, you've been driving my pickup up and down the road for the last six months. He knew everything I was doing. He never said nothing about it. <laughs> I, he was smarter than I gave him credit. I'd park it right back where it was so he wouldn't think I moved it, you know. Brilliant. Okay. Lean air fuel mixture burns hot and fast. Lean air fuel mixture burns hot and fast. Look what your gases are doing here. Your best economy is right here. Right? Your NOx is high, your CO is low, and your CO2 is high. See that? Well, their hydrocarbon got to be dipping down there too, but you want some, you know, you're basically, if you're doing exhaust gas analysis, you want your CO2 to be high and your other stuff to be low. All right, fuel pump on a vehicle can be heard for two seconds at key on, but the fuel gauge shows the full tank, 8.9 amps. An empty fuel tank is the least likely cause. Why? Because the fuel pump ain't going to pull but about one and a half amps if it's empty. 
Now that Crown Victoria, if you check it, even when it's got gas in it, it might pull four or five amps. That one doesn't pull a lot of amps. Uh, but most of them will pull like six to eight amps if they got gas in them. Only about one and a half if they don't. That's one quick way to find out if one's out of gas, even if the gauge is reading like it's got gas in it. If the idle air control counts are zero, the engine may have a vacuum leak. So what it's doing is, there is a place in the uh, idle speed area when you're let, when you're off the gas and you're at closed throttle and all that called the dead band. Some people when they used to jack around with the throttle stops on their vehicles because they like to turn screws and watch things happen, they would turn it up a little bit so that the idle speed control would say, well look at here, we're already at the target idle, so what do I need to do anything for? So it just closed off and just let it out of where it wanted to. You know, that's the dead band. But it caused other problems. You never roll an idle and stuff like that. The engine is running at 245 degrees, the cooling system full of clean coolant, blah, 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 bad water pump. What I like to do is I take the two heater hoses loose and get a piece of that clear hose you buy from Ace Hardware and put it in there long enough to start it up and see if it's, you know, pumping water through there. Because you're bypassing the heater core with this clear piece of hose. And it shoots through there like that. And so uh, if it's not moving, I have seen them where it, the car wasn't running hot, but there was no, but she didn't have any heat. And when we did that, we found out there was no coolant going over. It's really it's amazing. And there's a fuel pump, there's a uh, water pump over here. I'd have to find it. Where the impeller is rusted to the point to where there's probably uh, nearly a quarter of an inch space between the tip of those impeller blades and the, and the reaction surface. And it just wasn't pumping. It's cavitating. Uh, the output B only is what I'd go here, but I will say this if you're really sensitive and you put your meter on a really, really low reading and you're turning a hall vector, a hall uh, vector sensor through really, really slow, you can read a little bit of voltage and a deflection on a meter, but not when you're spinning it at normal speed. And what was one thing? A dash mounted warning light. Now, Jeep. Cherokees and stuff managed to get away without having a dash mount and warning light their whole life, I think, except for 1991. They came out with a dash mount and warning light and they dodged that for a while. EGR system failure can cause a higher soil of combustion chamber temperatures, ping, any of these, all of these uh, EGR system if it's not flowing. That's why Charles was there. Oh, I'll take EGR for all that. So, okay. I was just trying to rain on Charles's parade. Basically, I said it'll probably get run too hot in there and it'll burn a whole lot of piston. Technician has been led by DTCs to investigate fuel trim numbers that are as follows. Short fuel trim, 1%, long fuel trim, 25%. The crankcase oil may be contaminated with fuel. How does that happen? You go too long without changing the oil. Simplest thing, happens all the time. You go too long without changing the oil, you're going to have some, because of the blow-by, you're going to have some contamination in there. Technician A, just right here. The big one is the one that's going back to the engine. And if you're ever going to pinch off the hose going to a heater core to make sure that, you know, to see if the heater, in other words, if you're thinking the blend door may be an issue and you want to stop the hot water from going through the heater core on one that doesn't have a heater control valve, if you pinch the, use hose pliers to pinch it, don't pinch the one coming back to the motor because you may bust the heater core. You want to pinch the one where it's going in. If you don't know which one that is, it's usually the one coming from the water pump is the one that's going in. But you can't ever tell on a lot of them nowadays because them darn things are piped all kinds of different ways. All right, now this one right here, uh, technician A, but this is a, there's a caveat to this. Uh, like a 2001 Nissan Xterra has got a crank sensor and a distributor. But you do set the timing on the Xterra because all the crank sensor is there for is for misfire detection. You can unplug the crank sensor and the darn thing will run because the distributor is where it's getting everything on that one. That's not the norm. Everybody else goes by different rules than that. I mean, if Nissan's got another one, I don't know which one it is, but I ran into one of them. Technicians investigating a no-start condition on a vehicle. Now, what's wrong with this? If you switch it on and it's been sitting there for three or four hours, all of those temperatures ought to be the same. Right? Unless you got the hood open and it's a hot summer sun baking on the motor. If you got the hood closed, you ought to see within a few degrees 
Well, you know this one here ain't reading right. And that's a substituted value by the OBD2 enhanced system. Well, uh, so that should be C. Five cylinder engine has a firing event every how many degrees? 144. Tim was over there rapidly doing some scribbling. Temperature stamp, oh, yeah, that's when it starts to open. If it's a 196 degree thermostat, that's when it starts to open, or if it's in, you know, Celsius. The exhaust gas recirculation valve, when fully open, well, it's less than 10%. B. That's basically to cool the combustion chamber. I have heard some people say that reburns some of the exhaust gas. Well, if you've got to reburn it, you ain't doing a good job at all the first time around, are you? Basically, you're cooling it, so what? Why are you wanting to cool the combustion chamber? So the bad things don't happen. <laughs> so you don't make NOx. You don't want to make oxides of nitrogen. You get over 2,500 degrees in the combustion chamber during a flash event. And what is it that actually pushes the piston down when that fire lights off in there? Expanding nitrogen. Because well, most of what's in there is nitrogen anyway. So the nitrogen is what, uh, you know, uh, Bernie Thompson calls the working fluid. And it makes sense. But it's inert. Technician A says, late ignition timing can cause a speed density fuel injection system to run rich and force the fuel trim readings to the negative. This is both. Uh, I knew this guy one time that had a Ford Bronco, a 73 Ford Bronco, and he took a Mustang engine, like a 96 or 97, I mean 86 or 87 Mustang engine, and stuffed that thing in there. But we built the Mustang engine and put a cam in it. The 351 Mustang? Or? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the old, an older Mustang, you know, it was like the motor that's probably in yours. But yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, fire and order, 137 whatever. But long and short of it is, it ran really, really rough and rich at idle because he had a cam in it. Mm -hmm. And he had a map sensor. And when you got a cam, when it's cammed up, it's got low engine vacuum. When it's got low engine vacuum, the map sensor says, I got a load on me. So it's sending that information to PCM. PCM says, oh, we got a load that dumps extra fuel in there. So how do you fix something like that? This guy spent $28,000 fixing his vehicle. Uh, and he's got a cam in there, and he's got map. And he's running rich. He runs fine going down the road, but when he stops, he's pumping out black smoke and idling around. And I fixed that sucker. You know what I did? I put a mass airflow kit on it. Took care of all the problems. He didn't put a map on it when he put that motor in? No, because the motor originally had a map on it. It yeah, map on it some of those 351s come with map. Like they do, the newer ones. Well, mine came with map. That didn't start until when? Uh, mine's in 96. Exactly. It it's started so it about 1990, and this guy put an 80s vintage. I thought, I thought you said he put a 1996. The only mass airflow there. sensor on any of those Ford Mustangs in 1989 got a mass airflow sensor. But it was 94 until they got serial data. In other words, they didn't have... That was annoying because everybody else got serial data. The Mustang already had mass airflow in 89. Yeah. You know, and whenever they had to retype the program for something like that, they'd actually had the serial data. All right. All of the above happens there. And in this one here, either A or B. The condition of the one-way clutch and the torque converter. If you're standing on it when it's in gear with all the brakes locked and blocked and all that kind of stuff, then if it's got low stall speed, that either means the engine's underpowered or the one-way clutch in the torque converter is, has failed. One-way clutch in the middle of the stator, which the stator gives you torque multiplication. And uh, our shop foreman had one that was an expedition that was brand new that he had. It was skipping on one cylinder every now and then. And while we were brake torquing it, I noticed it was uh, stalling at 1800. And I looked it up and it was supposed to stall at 2800. And I said, you got a bad torque converter on this one here. It wasn't, we couldn't even get it to skip, but it was stalling at a real low stall speed. Um, B and C. Fuel trims will go positive because it will reflect the lean mixture. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, didn't we? Or was it the day before yesterday? I don't know. If you switch on the ignition and hear the fuel pump, you know the PCM is awake and functioning. If you just switch it on. Two seconds on, two seconds, you know, and, and then it goes off. Oh. Is that fun? Or what? Oh. All right then.